Today's video is brought to you by HelloTushy.com. Hey, brother. Okay, guys, let's talk Harry Potter. It's a great big story about good versus evil, Harry versus Voldemort, and even in some ways, Godric versus Salazar. A battle that fractured a friendship and nearly a millennium later is still going on through the heir of Slytherin himself. That link back to Slytherin is so important throughout the entire story, and Voldemort recruits most, if not all, of his followers from Slytherin House. The most pure-blooded of them all come together to redefine what it means to be a wizard in a bad way clarify that. It's the Malfoys, the Lestrange, Rosiers, Crabs and Goyles, Avery, Bullstrode, Parkinson, Travers, Burke, and Crouch. Name after name after name, directly from the Sacred 28, the longest and purest bloodlines. And that is purest as long as you don't pay too much attention to the limited dating pool. Did you know that Sirius's parents were literally cousins? Cause they were. Honestly, as a member of Slytherin House, this is frustrating. Like it would have been great just to have one character, one character who was good. I mean, there's Snape. Really, when it comes down to it, he mostly started or contributed to a lot of this. Slughorn, he reluctantly came on board heroically. Woo. All of that to say though, what if I were to tell you that some of Voldemort's most key supporters were descendants of none other than Ravenclaw. Hey, brother! Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, HelloTushy.com. Father's Day is just around the corner, and let's face it, you've hit all of the classics, the neckties, the fishing gear, but I have an idea for you that will start out hilarious and end up being their new favorite thing. And that is, of course, the Hello Tushy 3.0 attachable bidet system. Plus, there's a super easy add on gift free installation by you to show off your great plumbing skills. Which is to say, it doesn't actually require any at all, but he doesn't need to know that. And for that matter, you also don't need any additional electricity, it just attaches to your existing toilet. Plus, plus, you will be providing your folks with not only top-notch cleanliness, but also savings. The Hello Tushy Bidet will actually cut down on toilet paper usage by 80%. So it is the gift that just keeps on giving in more way than one. And you can buy with confidence because it comes with a risk-free 60-day guarantee and a 12-month warranty. So give your dad the gift of cleanliness and head on over to hellotushy.com super to get 10% off your order and free shipping. This special offer is just for our viewers, so head on over to hellotushy.com slash super, and again, get 10% off and free shipping. Last time, that is hellotushy.com slash super. Link is in the description down below. As ever with theories like these, it is hard to know where to start. With the founders in particular, they are massively important fixtures for the story, but we actually know shockingly little about any of them. We do know that none of their names have survived throughout all of the years to the present day, but that Tom Riddle is in fact the heir of Slytherin, the actual product of just centuries and centuries of families being determined to maintain that pure-blooded line all the way down to the disheveled Gaunt house, where in a twist of pure irony, the true heir of Slytherin is a half-blood. Moving on, we do know a little bit about Hufflepuff because we know that Hepsiba Smith is actually her very distant relative by way of the cup of Hufflepuff being passed down through the generations. It is possible that Zachariah Smith is related to Hepsiba Smith because we do know that she had family. I think you'll like this, Tom. Oh, if my family knew I was showing you, they can't wait to get their hands on this. But then again, we know that Smith is of course an incredibly rare last name, so. And to be honest with you, I actually prefer this other scenario, which timeline-wise doesn't match up, but you know what? Apparently sometimes that doesn't matter. McGonagall! You've no right! But Hepsiball, one other thing that she does say is, help yourself, Tom. I know how you love my cakes. And Jacob from Fantastic Beasts opens a bakery, a skill he learned from his grandmother, who we can actually see in the movie pictured right here and compare that with the chapter art for Hepsiba Smith. And I mean, am I right? Dead 
ringer. Not to mention, we do also know that Helga was a whiz with food related charms, but I'm not, not the point, not the point of today's video, but if you wanna check that out, you can do so by clicking the card. Although I must say, if I'm being honest with you, what I would really, really, really prefer is just for the timeline to be correct. But if that's not going to be the case anyway, then I will take what I can get because once again, McGonagall! Yeah, my rant's not quite over yet. That scene was even earlier in the world. And we know that McGonagall has been teaching at Hogwarts for 39 years and two years at the ministry before that. And 17 years before that, if we assume that she graduated from Hogwarts at the age of 17 would mean that she was born in 1937. And all this Fantastic Beasts is taking place currently in 1926. And that was like Lita as a little girl, which means like even before that. So like full video by clicking the card. What were we even talking about? Descendants? Oh yeah, Gryffindor. He didn't have any. I'm just going to assume you trust me. And I'm just gonna move right on ahead because that McGonagall bit took more time than I expected. Ravenclaw. Okay, here's where things actually get really interesting because we do know that Rowena had a daughter Helena. And that sentence alone is like 10 times more than we know about any of the other founders. The issue here is that we know exactly what happened to her. She is the gray lady. She is Helena Ravenclaw. She was murdered by the Bloody Baron. And that would actually seem to be the end of the Ravenclaw line. And let me just pause right there to say that like the founders really needed a better work-life balance because they were like way too career oriented. Also, if you think that's actually the end of the line, then <laughs> you must be new here. Okay, so in order to start peeling back the layers of the onion that is this particular idea, we first need to focus on one thing in particular, and that is Ravenclaw's relic, the diadem. Excuse me, can someone tell me what a bloody diadem is? It's a sort of crown. You know, like a tiara. Thank you for that explanation, hot lips. Where's my trivia people at? For you non-trivia people, hot lips is Cho Chang. We spell hot, H-A-W-T. It needed to be clarified. Okay, so the point is though that her artifact is very specifically like a crown, tiara, diadem type of thing. Whereas Godric had a sword, meaning that if, and more specifically, when he dueled, he could do it either magically or muggle -ly. Helga, of course, has Hufflepuff's cup, and the magical properties of it are actually unknown. Although it doesn't feel like a huge reach to believe that it might've had something to do with food, considering that was one of her key contributions to the school and because it is a cup. On that note though, I actually really like the idea that the cup was supposed to be the original like utensil that was able to transport food from the kitchens up to the Great Hall. I think it kind of makes sense too, because it's specifically a golden cup, and here is Harry's first time in the Great Hall. These tables were laid with glittering golden plates and goblets. Golden plates and goblets that magically fill when the feast is about to start though. Either way, the point is that it's a rather fitting artifact for her to have had. And so finally moving on to Slytherin, we know that he had the locket. And once again, magical powers are mostly unknown, but we do know that it required parcel mouth to open. My personal forever thought though, is that what is inside of the locket is in fact instructions on how to get to the Chamber of Secrets. Because after all, Tom Riddle and the Gaunts, the family that he comes from, are the only people to have ever found the Chamber of Secrets and they're also the ones who have the locket and are also parcel tongues. The thing is though, that all of these artifacts relate back to their founders pretty nicely. And so as we examine Rowena's, we actually do know what it does, that by wearing it, it can actually make you more intelligent, which is a very fitting attribute to its house. But the fact that it is specifically a diadem is kind of interesting to me because it kind of begs the question, like who wears a diadem? And for me, my immediate thought is like royalty? Right? I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward, assuming that you do agree. But if you have any other crown wearing professions that you wanna let me know about, you can do so in the towel section down below. But now you will remember, I hope that I told you at the very outset of these meetings of ours, that we would be entering the realms of guesswork and speculation. I specifically use a canon Dumbledore quote there because we're about to start guessing at things a little bit and it feels like a good way to segue. But I do promise that if you stick with me, I can bring it back around. I believe that in some manner, Rowena is of royalty, which is why her item is a diadem. And I think she had two sisters and I think both of them also had crowns of some sort. Okay, so we don't really know anybody at all who is even supposed to be descended from Rowena herself because we know that her daughter, Helena, is killed by the Bloody Baron. Baron, by the way, also a royal title. And that's it, that's where it ends for Rowena. But I believe that her two sisters married into two of the most prominent and longest lasting wizarding families in the entire wizarding world, the Lestranges and the Blacks. And right off the cuff, I get it. Like. That sounds kind of absurd, but stick with me because there was one thing in particular that I just read recently that really stuck out to me. And it's the description Harry gives 
of Helena. She consented to pause, floating a few inches from the ground. Harry supposed that she was beautiful with her waist-length hair and her floor-length cloak, but she also looked haughty and proud. For the longest time, I always thought this sounded like a very familiar description for some reason, but I could honestly never place it until last week we were working on a video about Sirius, where I found this line in particular about him. Sirius stared around at the students milling over the grass, looking rather haughty and bored, but very handsomely so. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. These are two characters that are described as both being maybe attractive looking, but also rather haughty. So I was like, let's keep looking. And I found Sirius's brother, Regulus. Regulus was instantly recognizable as the boy sitting in the middle of the front row. He had the same dark hair and slightly haughty look of his brother, though he was smaller, slighter, and rather less handsome than Sirius had been. Like, what? That's kind of weird, right? So at this point in time, I was literally just looking for the word haughty. And the next thing I found was Sirius Black's cousin, Andromeda, Tonks's mom. Mrs. Tonks' resemblance to her sister Bellatrix became much less pronounced. Her hair was a light, soft brown, and her eyes were wider and kinder. Nevertheless, she looked a little haughty after Harry's exclamation. This one literally serves as a twofer because Harry is literally thinking that it's Bellatrix walking into the room. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, third time pays for all because at this point we have Sirius and Regulus and two of their cousins, Andromeda and Bellatrix, who all have this particular look. They also have one more sister, Narcissa Malfoy. I will say hers is not a dead ringer, but it is so in the same vein. His mother was blonde too, tall and slim. She would have been nice looking if she hadn't been wearing a look that suggested there was a nasty smell under her nose. Nasty smell under your nose is not exactly the same word as haughty, but if you look at the definition of the word haughty, I think it's just a more colorful description. Haughty, having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. I mean, am I reading in the description of haughty or just the description of my mouth voice, am I right? And I don't know about you guys, but me personally, I look down on haughty people. No, but seriously, at this point, we have five members of the same family, the Black family, who are all sharing resemblances to specifically Helena Ravenclaw. They're all beautiful people who are proud to a fault. Can that be a coincidence? I guess maybe, but let's just put a pin in it for now and continue forward. If Rowena is royalty and has a crown, and if she has two sisters, it kind of stands to reason that they would both also have crowns, right? Sometimes I like that you guys can't respond because agreed. But can we find another crown in the Black family? We do learn about all sorts of family heirlooms and trinkets and such that Mundungus is literally taking from Grimald Place and selling on the streets. And on my hunt for this crown, I kept thinking that as they were going through the piles of stuff, they were going to disregard something as junk, but that was going to be it. And this might sound kind of ridiculous, like that they wouldn't recognize the importance of like potentially a crown, but it's actually exactly what they do with Slytherin's locket. So it also doesn't matter because they didn't find anything. So at that point, I just started searching for crowns or tiaras or diadems. And while I didn't find anything specifically in Grimald Place, I did find another tiara, specifically Aunt Muriel's tiara, the one that Fleur actually wears at Bill and Fleur's wedding. Uh, but Muriel isn't a black. You might be chiming in and you're absolutely correct, but also she's not a Weasley either. She actually comes from Molly's side of the family and is a Pruitt. And if you travel even slightly up the black family tree, you will see very quickly that Sirius's father, Orion, has had one sister, Lucretia Black, who married Ignatius Pruitt. Ignatius, as in Percy Weasley's middle name. Uriel Pruitt may own the tiara, but it came from the Black family. Okay, so, so far we have matching crowns and haughty looks between the Ravenclaws and the Blacks, but where does the Lestrange family fit in? Well, for one, they are another family in the wizarding world that is ancient and very pure-blooded oriented. But what really turned us on to this family in particular is their house symbol, a raven, as in Ravenclaw. Isn't the raven your family emblem? And yes, I am very, very aware of the fact that the house symbol of Ravenclaw is actually an eagle, but more on that later. And on some level, you might still be like, yeah, but so? And I get it, except do you know which other family also has a raven as the symbol? The Blacks. Like, seriously? Two ancient pure-blooded families both have the same symbol? There are only 28 names on the sacred list. You guys couldn't be more original. I think the real reason is because they both started with the same symbol, 
from Ravenclaw. And it gets better. I mean, at this point, I was already pretty sold on the idea, but I will tell you that my jaw literally hit the floor when I was re-examining the chapter when Harry goes into the Lestrange family vault. The door of the vault melted away to reveal a cave-like opening crammed from floor to ceiling with golden coins and goblets, silver armor, the skins of strange creatures, some with long spines, others with drooping wings, potions and jeweled flasks, and a skull still wearing a crown. Skull wearing a crown. I honestly couldn't believe it. But there you go. Third crown found. That is three crowns for three sisters from three families all associated with ravens. Or, well, two, because of course, despite the name, Marina didn't choose Raven as her house mascot. She chose Eagle, which honestly is kind of fishy because you might not know this, but ravens are literally considered to be the most intelligent birds. To choose Raven, is a very obvious fit. And I also think that we have an explanation here. Rowena existed during a period of time where the tensions between the magical and non-magical community was pretty intense. If her two sisters married into the Black and Lestrange family respectively, then it stands to reason that they cared about blood purity. But we know for certain that Rowena did not care about blood purity, specifically because it is the key debate that splits up Hogwarts altogether. She sides with Godric and Helga against Salazar. Hoping to disassociate herself from her family's values, she very specifically dropped the symbol and chose something else. And not for nothing, but... Eagles are bigger than ravens. But she also can't help the family that she's from, and wit and intelligence are still things that she values, which is why they are the values of Ravenclaw House. Meanwhile, two of the families that are most known for blood purity in the modern age are also two of the wealthiest families in the wizarding world. They have some of the earliest and deepest vaults at Gringotts because they started quite literally royal. They married the Ravenclaw sisters who kept the raven but dropped the Ravenclaw name. The Black and Lestrange families all started in exactly the same place. Ravenclaw, just not specifically Rowena Ravenclaw. Three crowns make their way through history, one sister who stands apart from the rest. A family that, in part, saw themselves as better and wore the haughty expressions of superiority. And then there's Rowena, who stands apart from the pack with her daughter, who spurns the advances of who? The ghost of none other than Slytherin House, and a baron no less. A direct pupil of Salazar, a student who was handpicked for his blood purity. Guys, for my question of the day, could you buy into this particular idea? Does it hold up? Be sure to let us know in the towel section down below. One thing that I think is particularly cool about this idea is that if we are right about Jacob from Fantastic Beasts, then the other key family that's being like put center stage in that story is the Lestrange family. We could literally be seeing the backstories of the other founders unfolding before us, which in case you don't know, is the story we here at Super Carlin Brothers want to tell. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like like it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to find out how Dumbledore could be a descendant from Gryffindor, you can check out this video right over here. But otherwise, until next time, bye.